This day will never be forgotten. The 6th of March, 1957. Ghana made history in sub-Saharan Africa by becoming the first country to break the shackles of colonialism. Ghana, we now have freedom. Ghana, land of freedom. Ghana, your beloved country is free forever. Citizens of Ghana and fellow countrymen, good evening. The Ghana Armed Forces took over the reins of government of this country after a successful overthrow of the regime of Kwame Nkrumah. However, since independence on the 6th of March 1957, Ghana's history has been characterized by tumultuous political changes and a glut of coup d'etats from 1966 to 1991. Uh, we have called you here this morning for one specific reason. They want to prove that we were not instigated by anybody, neither will want to refute any allegation that ACA or God knows what has in, in, uh, instigated us to carry out the school. With the intermittent constitutional government, all of which were overthrown by the military. There has not been an election. There has only been an adventure by a small band of the military people stationed in Accra. Though the country has not experienced violent armed conflicts as the case has been in neighboring countries, a lot of human rights violations have been registered under various military regimes, that is, the National Liberation Council, the National Redemption Council, the Supreme Military Council 1 and 2, the Armed Forces Revolutionary Council, and the Provisional National Defense Council. These violations manifested in restrictions placed on press freedom, disproportionate and coercive use of state security institutions, and widespread arrest and torture of the so-called suspected enemies of the state. We are the Armed Forces Revolutionary Council. During our short stay in power, have demonstrated openly. Two military regimes, the Armed Forces Revolutionary Council, AFRC, and the Provisional National Defense Council, PNDC, stood out in the extensive use of repressive measures in dealing with citizens. Under both regimes, mass arrests, abductions, torture, and the public flogging of people for the crime of selling commodities for more than the regime's controlled prices were common. Against the backdrop of this history, Ghanaians embarked on a traumatic and divisive journey into their troubled past starting 2002, when the National Reconciliation Commission began investigating the bloody secrets of dictatorial and constitutional regimes. The formula was simple, torturers, killers, and their political leaders were to come forward and confess their crimes, and that if they did so, they would be granted amnesty. For the victims, there was to be recognition of their suffering and for perpetrators of the crimes, an opportunity to apologize for their actions. By the end of the process, the slate had to be clean and the past exercised. I, John Ejikum Kupur. These were the same reasons former President John Kufour cited for setting up the commission. He, for instance, singled out the execution of the generals as one issue that needed some form of closure. At the point I did what I did for the president of our nation, and I believe that I was acting in the best interest of our nation. Uh, after all, uh, of the distinguished people who lost or paid the highest penalties for their service. 
and aware of all segments of the country. The NRC was an essential part of the structure of President John Kofor's attempt to reunite the country and heal wounds. His Deputy Attorney General, Kwame Ose Prempe, explains this was also a campaign promise. During the 2000 campaign, President, then candidate, Don Ajikum Kufo, spoke a lot about the need for national healing, national reconciliation. In our history, during military regimes, so many people have suffered, so uh, many abuses. Starting from 1966, um, 72, and more pronounced in 79, during the uh, AFRC period, and the PNDC period from December 31st, 1981. Many, many Ghanaians suffered all sorts of abuses. And it's taken us 18 months of public hearings and in-camera hearings. In this special assignment, we put the spotlight on how truly reconciled Ghanaians are 15 years after the National Reconciliation Commission finished its work. We will explore the nature of human rights abuses and the military regimes in Ghana and the response to these acts of violations. The entrance of unconstitutional governments always led to sharp rises in violations with peaks at the beginning of the rule of these governments. Similarly, abductions and detentions were not confined to unconstitutional governments, but were higher under these governments than under the elected governments. Abductions and detentions remained remarkably high in the AFRC and PNDC regimes compared to other regimes. The Preventive Detention Act and the Protective Custody Law impacted greatly on detention violations as it was found out that the passage of the laws corresponded to peaks in detention violations. The military, the police service and the prison service were found to be the main perpetrators of the violations over the period. About 84% of all the violations occurred in the AFRC and PNDC areas all of which were superintended by former president Jerry John Rawlings. Wealthy and influential people in society suffered a larger proportion of the violations during these periods. <laughs> On 15th May 1979, there was a mutiny among a section of the armed forces. The nation heaved a sigh of relief when this was put down. For the first time in Ghana, a group of junior army officers had attempted to pull down a military regime made up of senior army officers. However, things took a dramatic turn when at the trial of the mutinous soldiers, Director of Public Prosecutions, George Aikens, went out of his way to defend their conduct. He praised them as young men who, seeing the corruption going on in society, tried to do something about it. On 4th June, some soldiers released those standing trial. The squadron commander at the Reki Regiment, Major Ibrahim Rida, tells us how it all started. Jofa started very early in the morning at 1 a.m. I had fire. Soldiers were shooting at the uh, 5th Battalion of Infantry, which is just across Reiki Regiment. And the fire intensified, and mostly soldiers were firing into the air. Uh, there was no target they were firing at, they were just firing into the air. They were getting excited and rebellious and all that. He maintains, had the military been interested in quelling this insurrection, it would have been done. Around uh, 6 a.m., my commanding officer called me and said, uh, get ready, I'm sending a, a, a vehicle to come and pick you up to 
you know, to the regiment. From where I lived, it was about 600 yards. So my commanding officer sent a vehicle to pick me up and went to the regiment and we rallied the troops around, got all the armored cars lined up on the square, which we normally do, and uh, ammunition loaded, ready for orders. My commanding officer tried as much as possible to get hold of the brigade commander, which was difficult, it, it didn't happen. Eventually, General Odati Wellington responded. When he responded, he ordered that he needed the broadcasting house to address the troops. If you remember at that time, the broadcasting house had been captured and Rollins had gone to make an announcement. And one of the things that he said that were very detrimental to the officers was that the officers should not stand in the way of the junior ranks because they were fighting against the repression that had taken place, which was a big lie. There was no repression. I got uh, my squadron ready. By uh, around half past eight, I arrived at the broadcasting house, drove the mutineers out of the place, went onto the air, and announced that I had captured the broadcasting house. And that was a signal for the general to be brought there. The general came there around nine o'clock, and he made his broadcast. Good morning, fellow countrymen. I have come to the studio to confirm that the uprising which took place during the early hours of this morning has been curled. I am hereby ordering all officers and men of the Ghana Armed Forces to return to their respective units. Steps are being taken to restore the armed forces to normalcy. All officers and men of the Ghana Armed Forces, I repeat, are to report back to their respective units. I am Komla Adam. This is the AM show. A little later on the show, Daniel Daze will be joining me. And you just watched extracts of the much anticipated documentary, Scars of a Revolution which aired last night. It unravels the atrocities before and during June 4 uprising led by then junior rank in the military, Flight Lieutenant Jerry Rawlings. Now, Ghanaians embarked on a traumatic and divisive journey into their troubled past from 2002 when the National Reconciliation Commission began investigating the bloody secrets of dictatorial and constitutional regimes. We have a conversation on the back of this as we host Captain Budukumsen retired and Zaha Yebo a former PNDC Secretary for Youth and Sports. Your views, welcome on this as well via WhatsApp 0541090009. Please stay tuned in. <laughs> 